Hi, I'm Lisa K. Donner, along with Jeff Charles, Keelan Ferris, Scott Cosenza, and Mark Angelides. And this is the Conservative Five, Liberty Nation's online TV news program. It seems the U.S. Supreme Court has decided to keep us hanging on. They have said they will take up two key issues this coming term, abortion rights and gun rights. Those are two of the hottest hot button issues out there. But there's more, oh, so much more coming up on the high court's docket. And nobody follows the docket more closely than our own legal eagle, Scott Cosenza, the one who has an Esquire after his name. So Scott, you've had your ear to the ground on all things SCOTUS this week. What's the SCOTUS scoop? Well, I was thinking and hoping, as, along with other court watchers, Lisa, that we might learn whether or not they were going to grant a third kind of milestone case for the next term. Lisa, court watchers, including myself, were a bit disappointed because we were hoping that the Supreme Court would announce this week whether they were going to take a case to decide whether or not affirmative action or race discrimination benefiting some and punishing others was going to be continue to be legal in higher education and hiring and all sorts of uh, things. They haven't said whether they're going to take that case. We had a situation where uh, the Justice Department under Donald Trump sued Yale University for uh, anti-Asian discrimination, and that was seen as a vehicle to try to get race-based affirmative action and discrimination before the Supreme Court, you know, to decide for all Americans. But the Biden administration put the kibosh on that two short weeks after they uh, they, they took office. They, they love their racial discrimination. So uh, what we're now waiting to see is if they will take the case. We have those abortion and guns cases uh, that were taken. And we know that because four justices need to vote yes to advance a case to be included on the court's docket, that's what it will take. And if we do see it, in the affirmative action case, along with the abortion and guns case as well, conservatives are very happy with that because they think that it means that the conservatives on the court are looking to move these cases forward with a result that will please conservatives. That you know, Scott, that's uh, that, that's a great point. That this is what I've been wanting to ask you. Actually, I was I was going to message you earlier about it, but what you tell us about these cases, it, it's most surprising that. These two cases in particular, the the gun case and the abortion case, have been taken at all. And as you say, it takes the four justices to to agree to hear it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they will rule. The four justices that choose to hear the case will rule in the way that conservatives or progressives think that they will. I mean, this is quite clear. This is probably Trump's most lasting legacy here, unless, of course, there's a second act coming down the line that uh, th there are the conservative justices on the case, but we don't actually know which justices chose to hear these cases. It, it might have been a clean sweep of nine, or, but it has to be a minimum of four. Oh, wait, but no, I want to no, no, no. ask Scott a question, if I may. Um, Scott, do you think that the four justices that chose to hear the case on uh, abortion and guns were Thomas Alito, Gorsuch and Coney Barrett? Do you think that was those four? Yes. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> All right. So they don't publish. They don't tell you who voted. No. Is that right, Scott? That's that's correct. So, who votes to advance a case to the court's docket? Right. So the there are many many thousands of people who want their cases heard by the Supreme Court. Only a hundred or so get lucky enough to have that case picked up. They vote themselves which cases they're going to hear of those many applicants. Minimum of four justices to get on the docket. They never publish with who the four are. Justices may in the future at like, sometimes you'll see it like an academic conference though. They might mention if they voted to advance a case forward, but it's not like it's a published uh, uh, document or record. I think that what we're seeing here, this is why the left went so hard against Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett. This is why they trotted out people to accuse Brett Kavanaugh of, of sexual assault. This is why they went so hard against Neil Gorsuch, even before he was announced. 
Like th- th- this is the, the, when when Obama said elections have consequences. These are the consequences. And really, these are cases that should be taken up. So I'm, I'm glad that it's happening. It like Mark said, it's not a guarantee that it's going to go the way that conservatives want it to go. But there's a much better chance of it happening if the court had remained the same and Trump hadn't appointed who he appointed. This is why they're trying to uh, undo the Trump legacy in every possible way, which I think we're talking about later on the show. But Sheldon uh, Whitehouse, Sheldon Whitehouse, a U.S. senator who's on the uh, um, Judiciary Committee, has made it his his kind of mission in life since November to, to sort of frustrate the court because of Donald Trump's appointments. I just saw a story today where they've now uh, asked the um I'm trying to remember U.S. Marshal Service, I think the people who are in charge of guarding and transporting Supreme Court justices for their security. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones, right? They uh, no, that's something else, Mark. Um, you continue your search for the one armed, uh, the one armed killer over there. Uh, and what Speak they've asked the Richard for, Kimball Foundation, if you feel you've been found guilty for a crime you did not commit. OK, we're talking about the fugitive, Keelan, so <laughs> probably 20 decades before you, you know, are even born. Power. Go ahead. I. Uh, I'm interested to see how the media is going to spin this when uh, ne- the next session comes. I think when Amy Comey Barrett was, uh, you know, selected by Donald Trump, a lot of the media spun that, you know, Roe v. Wade was going to be overturned. And I wonder if, you know, once we get to this case, the media is going to spin this as, oh, my gosh, we're going to lose Roe v. Wade Um they're not going to allow abortions anywhere in the country anymore, which is not what this is about. So when people apply to the Supreme Court, they state a question presented. So the, they suggest that the court should say, we're going to take this case to answer the following question presented. For instance, in the Harvard uh, Asian Affirmative Action Racism case, the question presented that the petitioners wish the court to accept is whether or not the Supreme Court's own previous rulings are constitutional in allowing race-based discrimination, right? Well, the Supreme Court can take the case, but then tweak or tailor the question presented. So you have to look at both things to decide where the court may then go in the future with their ruling. And in the abortion case that's going to be heard in the fall, the question presented is whether or not a state can enact early term restrictions on abortion pre-viability. So that might lead them to an, a place where they could actually overturn Roe. Uh, this is animating both uh, liberals and conservatives, you know, the, on, on either side of that issue. But, but I think it's fair to say that the Supreme Court has been, you know, really a disappointment to a lot of conservatives. I mean, we've got a lot of conservative judges on there. And it seems like when it's time to step up, to the conservative bar, you know, they're not willing to do. What do you think, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, if there was any time where the Supreme Court was not going to be a disappointment to conservatives, this is probably the best chance we've got here. I mean, and it, and these are only two cases that there, there will be more coming down the road. Again, the legacy of what Trump did with the court is going to keep going. And, and I'm with Keelan. I'm looking forward to seeing how the Democrats and the media react to it, because, I, I you know, I like a good laugh. I, and we all like a good laugh. I watch stand up, but I also watch the way Democrats freak out. You know what I you know what I can't wait to see? all the women who are going to go to Capitol Hill wearing Handmaid's Tale costumes. Because, you know, they, they did that here in Austin, and it was hilarious. I even started watching the show. I like the show. But just seeing the pageantry of, of their ridiculous absurdity is going to be highly entertaining. I can't yeah. wait. It's kind yeah. of a cute look, I think. So, Jeff, yeah. funny you mentioned the Handmaid's Tale lot, because uh, I, I was covering the um, – uh, the, the protests in, in the UK a couple of years ago for LibertyNation.com. And we had the Handmaid's Tale outfit. It was nothing to do with abortion. It was nothing to do with women's rights. It was nothing to do with the subjugation of women or the division of sexes. It was to do with Brexit. And yet people thought, well, you know, this is such a great outfit. I mean, I love the book. I think Margaret Atwood is, she, I, I think she's my, my favorite female writer. Uh, I think she's fantastic, but the, the Handmaid's Tale had nothing to do with Brexit. It's just an excuse to dress up in this in this wonderful dystopian outfit. Uh, and I wouldn't be it, it wouldn't surprise me if you saw that coming in for the for the anti gun marches, for the anti farm aid marches. And people will just wear that stuff because it's a great costume. 
Yeah, I think they just like wearing it at this point. The honestly. Handmaid's I don't think Tale. It, just, it doesn't even mean anything anymore. <laughs> the Handmaid's Tale is the new black. <laughs> it works with everything. Can you give us a little synopsis on the gun rights case that they're looking into? So that's a, a case out of New York filed by the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association. It has to do with whether or not people have the right to carry a gun uh, outside their home. Basically, the New York State authorities uh, have a system where the law there and at it, this is the law in many of the very tightly controlled uh, jurisdictions with respect to guns. New Jersey has a similar law in which you apply to carry a gun and there's no standard that you can claim to meet, which then in, entitles you by right to that right to carry. So if I can, if I have visual acuity, that's uh, whatever within the bounds and I pass the, the test for the knowledge of the roads, I have to be issued a driver's license if I meet the standards. They can't say, well, yeah, but I don't like the look of you. I, I, don't, I don't think you're going to use this well. You're probably going to drive to, to ne'er-do-well places or you know, waste your time driving. Take public transportation. They can't say that. But that is what they say with guns, which is that there's no measurable standard. So it basically becomes if you're friends with a politician or you make campaign donations or if you're very lucky, then you can get it, but not by right. And that's what this case will uh, hopefully establish. Well, it seems straightforward to me, but I'm not on the U.S. Supreme Court. And as with most things court related these days, we'll be on pins and needles waiting to hear their rulings, as well as waiting to hear about any new cases they might want to take up. Thanks, guys. for our Conservative 5 panel today. Check out our other C5 shows and segments on your favorite video platform, YouTube, Vimeo, Rumble, we're on them all. As well, Liberty Nation has its own Roku channel where you can see all our TV productions. Thanks so much for tuning in. And remember, surf on over to libertynation.com. Sign up for our new member zone, just $29.99 for the year. This has been a production of libertynationnews.com, conservative news where truth matters.